women are protected there. Good. Okay. okay. So if, if there's Good a philandering yes. woman, uh, it's not protected under 9262. Okay. So, okay. so, but that doesn't. That still does that. I, I very good point, but it does well. We think of it only because the majority of the cases are women, no. But um, there will be that gap, and then this will end up as our option. You have you have uh, that law that protects women, and then you still have the general law on torts and damages. That no, if if we were to repeal both laws, then a woman can resort to. 9262, and a man could still resort to, no, if, I'm saying if we just repeal and I do not have a marital infidelity law, then a man would just res resort to the ordinary, an ordinary um, case of damages, unless we file, so, so the option for the committee would be to file a bill on marital infidelity, which would either be defined as a crime and or a civil liability. Diba? Um, or, along naman we have a separate law just for a man because there's already RA 9262. What, what do you think, uh, Judge? Um, okay din po yung marital infidelity kasi meron din naman mga cases na yun namang babae naman ang nag-abuse naman talaga sa rights mm -hmm. ng lalaki. So, okay din po yun. So, the woman has option. Uh, she can file the case uh, under marital infidelity or 9262, whichever is uh, easier to to file. Talaga yung concubinage, hirap po mag-file ng concubinage. But, yeah, eh. but what I'm thinking of now is, you know, I want this committee to look at the bigger picture and I want to take into consideration the expert opinion of, of our psychologists here that tells us that it does not solve the marital problem, no? Yun din yung gusto ko kasing iway dito. Like, of course, we're, we're kind of stuck in a situation where we define those crimes separately, eh, historically, since an, almost, 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 a, almost a century, 85 years ago, we defined that. Uh, nine, 80 years ago, 1930s, no? Um, so, because we defined it, are we now saying that in this day and age, it's still a crime, it will solve the problem? Because if you look at other crimes, you, 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 it's a crime because the person is injuring society. So you have to take them out of society, put them in a place where they're not harming people, diba, obviously. And then that's the rep and that's also penalty that you have to serve because of the wrong that you did. So I'm not making a judgment yet. I'm just actually thinking aloud that what good now does, does um, imprisonment do? Because... Our expert tells us it doesn't help the marriage. Revenge. Again? Revenge. For Revenge. Love. Revenge. <laughs> Revenge. For it doesn't even prevent. It makes the, the erring spouse just uh, wiser. So the next time he's not going to be, get caught. <laughs> then, then, then I guess the, que the next question is, um, and then I go back to the statistics, diba? How many ba talaga ang nafafile? Nagagamit lang ba? Does it end up clogging the judicial system <laughs> such that other cases like, like uh, street children, like um, abused children, traffic young girls and young boys, does it now prevent the judges from doing this? Because the revenge of the spouses are playing it out in the courtroom. That That's a little bit... I mean, yun nga, if we had 10 more... Ten more judges for every family court for every province. Siguro okay na rin sa akin with a complete set of psychology, social worker, etc. But without that, parang to me, I'd rather our court spends time on trafficking, on on children who are being beaten up by their neighbor, by their uncle, by their their um, substitute parent. That's how I see it. Anything else? I mean, I mean, you know, I'm I'm digesting this namane, so there's no immediate. Um, uh, yes, attorney uh, Mendoza. So, sa ma'am, it's it's just a giving an option to either spouse, uh, something to resort to just in case it happens to them, no. But it doesn't reform anybody, or it may reform somebody, but it gives the person an option i think we but should revisit i think we should revisit in 9262 
because uh, Ma'am Sabio J, when we used to issue watch list orders when we were still allowed until mm. we mm. were, we had this TRO, uh, yun po ang common case na file 9262. Because yung overseas worker na lalaki, aalis without... Ma ma Ma, hindi, aalis po. Mm -hmm. Smell kakaroon ng babae doon. Mm -hmm. And then when he comes back, we know watch this order na siya ng babae just to prevent it. Kaya lang, ma'am. Nung asawa niya dito. Oh. Po, eh, paano naman po yung financial, ano nila, needs ng mm -hmm. family mm -hmm. if he is prevented to work abroad because of the 9262 na, ano, inaabuso nga ako. Yes. So, ginagamit. Siguro yun po ang kailangang i-revisit yung law oh, Let's have a separate hearing on that. Opo. Kasi and, mukhang ang dami natin oh, issue on, on that. But, huh? was, but the, yung sa marital infidelity po, I think we should leave it as, you know, as i-criminalize pa rin po siya just to give option to either spouse. But yun nga yung problem ko, the way you're, even the way you're, you're explaining it, it's giving an option to a spouse. But do we really need to bring in the court system for that option? You know what I mean? Like, I agree, no? I mean, what is the what is the repercussion of this wrongful deed that you did, not just injuring me, but my children, my the society, you know, that we live in? <coughs> Pero nga, do we bring in the courts? That, that's, that's, it, that's, it still boils down to that. That's still my question. And we already have data now, at least based on um, um, the the information shared with us in Bulacan, that it really is clogging the... I mean, it's one of those that take up so much time and they stay in jail for three years. I don't know if that was the intention of the, the law. Now, three years na hindi, hindi, pa, hindi pa tapos yung kaso mo. Hindi naman yun, di ba? Madam Chair. Kasha lang. And another, ano, is dun sa infidelity. How do we define it? Yung once ba na ng aliwa is already counted na it's a crime or dapat ba ano siya um, may pattern of behavior na he's doing it so para i think we actually I, that, that, that is too. a valid question like at what point does it become a crime i mean at the end of the day it is it not legally a crime not i don't mean it in a legal way but it is a crime to your spouse diba you 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 um your vow diba you broke your marital vow but at what ta what point does it become a crime in terms of a legal crime injurious to society ako i think that's a valid question kasi sa akin as long as equal yung treatment i'm pretty much fine so if you say that one incident is not a crime for either bahala na kayo to work it out if you say it's 10 if you say it's repeated I just, I, I, and again, this is just my personal view offhand. Eh? I mean, when I, when I study this all together, I might have a different view. I'm just really concerned with it adding to the, to the court's already overburdened um, uh, load. Yes. Yeah, I think we're, we're open whether it's criminal or civil or As some other course. We can continue to have discussions. I know that some women's groups... Um, do not want it to be criminalized and just resort to divorce, which is the case for um, U.S., Russia, Canada, Israel, and Poland. Adultery represents a ground for divorce. Mm, can you say it again, U.S.? U.S., Russia, Canada, Israel, and Poland. Mm. But Canada, Canada considers uh, crime of adultery the same as what we're saying. Um, adultery is a crime in Korea uh, up to two years in jail. And then in... Dito, hindi pa, hindi pa nahir ng, ng... Hindi pa natapos yung kaso mo. Nasa jail na. na. Oo. But we have to be, you know, it's not gonna change overnight. It's not yeah. gonna change in a few right. years. Yeah. But in, ma'am, in Iran, Pakistan, and Saudi Arabia, and Yemen, uh, adultery is uh, penalized by death. <laughs> but no recent executions. Sorry, I didn't hear that we were... Uh, Iran, there. Pakistan, and Saudi Arabia, and Yemen yeah. consider adultery uh, punishable by Adultery death. only. Yeah. It's a woman. Adultery. Diba? Yeah. Okay, very interesting. Yeah. Judge and then uh, Dr. Um, Vivo ba ang reason why adultery has a uh, higher penalty is the uh, fear of introducing...
foreign foreign body in the in, <laughs> in the, the family, in the family lineage. Oh, who, who will be entitled to the legitimate later exactly. on so dito sa ano naman uh, yung in answer dun sa case na terminate po once lang is enough once is enough so uh, kung kung yun kung yun ang rational uh, mm, once is enough but isa concubinage kaya concubinage eh, under scandalous circumstances mahirap talagang i-prove no i but, i guess i guess to to sorry judge let allow you to continue I'll, but I'll, uh, but because of 9262 it has already been uh, remedied by 9262 mas Oh, they, can, they can now na. file. They have something to file now. Yes, That's meron ako. Na Pero uh, ang suggestion ko po, siguro deterrent din naman yung may marital infidelity sa... Kasi minsan bold na rin ang women eh. Medyo malakas na rin loob. Baka, mm. baka pagka maging ground lang siya, baka naman talagang gusto niya lang na magkaroon ng ground for divorce. Ah, sige, ano na tayo, mag-commit ako na adultery para may ground ako for divorce. Diba? Happy pa siya. Uh, double jeopardy naman sa lalaki. Happy na siya, nag-commit siya na adultery. May ground pa siya ngayon for divorce. Very complex. <laughs> okay, well, since we're speaking of divorce, can uh, you had one more thing to say. Yeah. Uh, what I say as a therapist to couples with problems like this is that there's life after infidelity. So my problem is when we think in terms of infidelity as a crime, then it magnifies in the minds of spouses that infidelity is the greatest crime that you could commit in marriage, mm. which I disagree. I think you did say that in the hearing, no? that there are worse, there yes. are much worse problems than infidelity. Right. And there are couples where the marriage is basically okay, then something happens, and then one spouse becomes unfaithful. Then he is already seen as evil, bad. But all the good was erased. Yes, because we have this kind of thinking. Mm -hmm. The culture mitigates against that, uh, that forgiveness, one, that understanding. That one major failure. Yeah, so it could even uh, go against the sanctity of marriage and family. Mm. That's when very you come interesting. To think of it. That's that's a very fresh perspective, Madam Chair. Yes, a question. So does it mean, uh, like, I have kids. Should I have a daughter? Should I start, para teaching her that to if you get into a relationship, then <laughs> so expect that it could happen. It could happen, and it's not the end. It shouldn't be the end of the relationship just because your partner committed infidelity. Uh, expect that there are problems in marriage. Uh, that could be one of them. It could be one of them. And you understand where it's coming from. And your understanding determines whether uh, the wounding is malignant or whether it's uh, one of those problems that you have to deal with in marriage. If it's malignant, then you go through a more uh, decisive process of letting go. <laughs> Eh, kasi ano nga yun, eh? um, as you were saying, we we have been conditioned to believe that it is the most and the the most horrible crime that well the most horrible act that a or it is the it is the ultimate um, act of um, infidelity or what do you call this break it breaking the marriage vows by doing that. Yeah. Um, we haven't even spoken, talked about emotional affairs or infidelity. Because of the internet, there are already unfaithfulness online. And yeah, it's almost as real as when you engage a person in a physical intimacy. So, Dr. Bautista, parang that's another form of infidelity, online infidelity. <laughs> Oo naman, ang daing ganun, ang daing mga asaw, and it's common among women too. Ang daing mga asawang lalaki halos mabaliw-baliw kasi na, nabuksan nila yung email ng misis nila at mayroong ka-affair. Sabi naman ng misis, wala naman yan eh, nagpa-fantasize lang ako. So they real. never had physical, they never had physical contact? No it's, physical contact. It's just contact. really a uh, text mate, an email, uh, or love. ganyan. Profession of love. Mm. No? Abdication of the legal 
official so short of having met physically oh, oh, all the elements lahat? of love and um, all the elements of a relationship are there ano na lahat mm. kaya mabaliw-baliw yung asawa so, madam chair that's another complication eh yung definition ngayon of infidelity so gawa tayo ngayon ng online <laughs> marital infidelity see that but that's the reality eh 20 maybe 50 years from now irrelevant na yung marital infidelity as we define it because nga of, of the prevalence of these kind of things. Eh. Ako, I, I, I totally agree with that. I mean, who's now to define at what point the the lack of affection and, um, physical and physical contact you have with your spouse has been diverted to another, whether it's through physical, again, replacement of physical um, attraction, presence, or just virtual. I that's that's something that is becoming very common. Yes, uh, we can define that as an attempted marital infidelity, preparatory to. Uh, <laughs> that with all the budget fares, madali na matutoy yon. Because preparatory na yun, a preparatory acts. <laughs> Virtually, some people take off their clothes. So ano yon? Well, anyway. So let's leave that because it, this actually will go hand in hand with the next topic. Um, I want to devote a few minutes to this. I won't, um, maybe we'll just take another 15 minutes and then I'll let you all go so that you're not staying much longer than you had intended. Anyway, we already had a fruitful discussion on that. Um, let's discuss psychological incapacity as a ground for annulment. So I, I, um, point to you the provision on family code which basically the only ground we have for annulment is psychological incapacity unless you consider voidable marriages which are very specific and stringent and not very many people fall into that um, fall into that ground so what I'd like to discuss now is the different views um, that have been the different positions that have been presented as to how this has worked, how this has been um, defined um, by the courts, and whether this definition would, whether we would be more consistent with the, because t bear in mind that the family code is uh, how old? 25, over, over 25 years old, no? So I do believe it is high time that we review this. We have so many cases already. Um, and I know aside from cases, um, maybe judge, would you be, well, as a professor now, be in a position to, maybe you be the one to update us. I studied this in the 80s. Actually, I was a freshman when the, when the family code, when, when the family code was made. So we actually still studied the civil code, pero nagbar ako with the family code. So... No, kami, we had the family, we were using, kasi yung annotations nun were all civil code pa. So we just had the family code as a codal, pero the bulk were, were still, ano, ganun ba? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I entered in 87. Oh, 91 ako. Well, anyway, Judge, so can you take the floor and uh, give us an overview of where we are now? Because um, for those non-lawyers, well, psychological incapacity is not really defined in the law. So it has taken, it has, it it was the court that has, over the decades, no, provided for the definition. Well, all it says, it's unable to fulfill their marital obligations, which is very broad. And and what I'd like to also discuss is if we are to, in fact, broad not broaden, but use the Supreme Court um, indicators of of uh, psychological incapacity then 
many of these are similar to the grounds for legal separation. So, so does it then just become a choice that every couple is allowed to make? As and then this is where I'll ask those familiar maybe PCW with foreign co in other countries where they have both legal separation and annulment, where the grounds are basically similar. So, Judge, go ahead. Um, yung psychological ground on psychological incapacity um, came from the canon laws. Mm -hmm. Di ba? Wala tayong talagang, pag wala na talaga iba under the, the different uh, articles, we resort, or the, the lawyers resort to uh, psychological incapacity. And the amendment, and the, uh, and the bill rather, provides for actually the indications of what is a psychological, a psychologically incapacitated person manifest, and it's it will be a convenient uh, guideline for the bench and the bar, okay. because actually these um, amendments, proposed amendments, are settled doctrines of the Supreme Court. So, hindi na medyo marami na siyang ano, marami na hong gagalawan within the definition of psychological incapacity. If we see the, if we look at the uh, Supreme Court decisions, lahat yan 80% denial because of the stringent application of the three uh, guidelines, the gravity, uh, juridical antecedents, and uh, incurability. Those three guidelines, those three factors. So, very, very few uh, decisions of the Supreme Court uh, uphold the uh, decision of the lower courts on granting the uh, nullity of marriage based on psychological incapacity. These guidelines will be a welcome amendment. Okay. This amendment. Because, because having said that, Judge, um, again, then there's so much inconsistency because... I would assume that most of the cases don't go all the way up to the Supreme Court. That's why I have I hear a lot of situations where um I mean we just we just hear so many cases where yung iba madali lang na hear yung kaso, yung iba naman umabot na sa Supreme Court and um yun nga madi-deny pa and the others that would have probably even weaker cases were already granted by the lower court. I mean procedurally it's correct, no? I'm not questioning that, but the again the reality of how different people are able to use the law it's very different parabang it just becomes um it becomes a a uh, it it totally de depends now on the on the actually on the judge if open minded on judges then you pretty much have a good chance of getting it as i mean everything else being equal diba but then, kung contentious din yun, then, then good luck. Kasi sabi nyo nga, 80%. So, that, that's what I also want to address, di ba? Para maging consistent, hindi dahil sa, sa favorable ang judge dito, madali dito sa judge na to, di ba? It, it, it should be less, um, it should be more, ano, more, it, it should be simpler, no? It should be subject to less uh, influence, discretion. There you go. That's oh. the word I'm looking for. Less discretion on the part of the judge. Yes. Kasi pag hindi open-minded yung judge, talagang close-minded siya, ito lang. Mm -hmm. These are the, uh, ito rin parameters niya. So, denied talaga. Ako kasi open-minded ako eh. So, I, I, I feel for the, I feel for the couple, I feel for the children. So, bak bago makarating sa court ang parties, alam mo na, nag-iipon yan ng pera for the, lawyer for yeah. the court litigation hindi pupunta yan ng hindi talaga punong-puno exactly totoo naman i mean to think that most people would abuse it and just left and right go to the court no. first of all it's a court system i understand when i was in cambodia a few years ago for a women's conference with um the women parliamentarians of cambodia dun pala um fixed marriages pa rin. so in that sense medyo makaluma yung style nila no kasi fixed marriage pero naman pag hindi mo type yung asawa mo you just go to the clerk of some i guess parang register registry din nila and file your divorce 
See, so, so you know, dif different countries have different systems, no? But that's what I was told. Because when I said, what, fixed marriage, how's that? I know, but you can just <laughs> go, to, go to court, not court, go to the clerk of something and file and pay. <clears throat> that's what I was told. <clears throat> So, um, so th that's that's exactly what I want to to try to address. Um, so, uh, having said that, um, since we're already starting with you, what what recommendations do you have? Do you have any specific recommendations? I strongly recommend the um, itemizing itemizing His grounds. Okay. So, kami rin makanalo gusto circumstances. Eh. Mm -hmm. So, okay, okay, sa amin yun. Actually, ah. I I asked the other family court judges before I came here. Mm. Sabi Okay sila. Because it makes us. it clearer. Yes. Because the other thing I wanted to share with you is this. Um, when you mentioned that the reality is before naman yan pumunta sa court, nag-ipon yan, punong-puno na rin sila, it's, it's not cheap. Huh? It's, it's normally a few hundred thousand pesos to, to hire a lawyer. I know because as a lawyer, so many people ask me. And when I refer them to different law offices, pamahal ng pamahal, even solo practitioners cannot afford to charge that small because, you know, yun talaga ang legal fees. Um, but what struck me with your statement, Judge, is when you said, yun nga, ang tagal, iipunin pa nila yun, punong puno na rin sila psychologically before they get there. And this is the thing. Those are for those who even got there. What about those who just decide, you know what, I don't have the money, minsan hindi ko na nakita yung asawa ko, I'll just go my own separate way without the benefit of any legal um, procedure that will describe me now as legal separated. And so the reality is marami tayong separated in fact, which for the record lang, do you agree that separation in fact, becomes very complicated with property, with obligations and rights. And um, to add to, so every, everyone said yes, just so that kasi kailangan ma-record yan. Kasi when I, when I explain it on the floor, you know, you are the experts that we are relying on. Um, case in point, today when I had to, to ask for a time out, um, a suspension of our hearing to hear the decision of the Supreme Court on RH, one of the reported um, provisions that was declared unconstitutional was the, in the law we provided that it is the right of a spouse to undergo a medical procedure without the consent of the other spouse. And that was struck down. And that bothered me. Again, this is based on the report. Now we have to see the whole decision for us to all give our more... Um, uh, you know, a, a more um, a better response. But offhand, my reaction to that is, if a woman, um, ah, so so basically that means that you now need your your spouse support, except now in cases of emergency. But there are many medical procedures that you need to undertake that are not yet emergencies. That what about now women? who are separated in fact, or are not even separated but their husbands are OFWs or cannot be located for a few months at a time, don't care about you, how can that be? So I have a problem talaga with, with, with that. No? And, and um, that, that reminded me of the situation you said na matagal naman nilang pag-iisipan yan before they go to court. And so if they don't go to court, then you have these situations where they're separated. In fact, they owe each other certain responsibilities. At the end of the day, the woman might have consented. In fact, let's just say, so that fair naman tong discussion ko to men, it's the woman who was philandering, she has another spouse, but the law says equal support, di ba? For both, <laughs> both, both couples must give what they can provide. Years later, technically, you still owe support for each other and for your children. So it's very complicated. That's why I feel it's so important to clarify this so that relationships are defined, not that we're promoting the dissolution of a family, but in fact, we're ensuring that society can continue in a manner that we can still trace who's responsible for who. So, okay, so having said that, thank you, Judge. Um, PCW. Um. We conducted roundtable discussions with some women's groups, and uh, they they suggested that the grounds for psychological should not be stated in the law anymore, because it might create confusion with the grounds when filing for legal separation. 
but but then I I see what you're saying. I, they're worried that it may limit. Ganun ba yon? Pero okay, let me jump sa, jump right now to Dr. Bautista. Um, does it not because because there's no case? Well, judge confer affirm this that no case can be heard or can be decided upon without a psycholo without a a psychological or a psycho psychiatric expert, right? No. Pwede walang psychological. Ah, pwede. pwede. In what It's way? not a requirement. It's not actually a, a requirement, a psychological or psychiatric. So how is that psychological determined? Because the law refers to psychological incapacity. How is that determined? I'm very curious. Wala pa rin ako decision na gano'n. <laughs> Lahat so, sila all are supported with kayo, the kami, kami sa court. But you're just saying it's not a requirement. It's not a requirement. Okay. It's but, a decision of uh, the Supreme Court. Okay, so but in other words... Even though I find that very strange, you're just relating the facts to me that that is what it is. Mm -hmm. Clearly, it must be based on findings of of the psychological capacity and capacity. All you're saying is that it it need not come from a psychologist or a psychiatrist. God knows who it's supposed to come from. I guess the judge, <laughs> right? That's what it is. But I mean, the fact remains that you must prove that. Right? That doesn't change. All you said is. E pala, hindi pala kayo lang ang expert. May iba pa palang ano, animal ngayon na expert on that. But having said that, kapitbahay, na kaya nga, pero ang magda-decide pa rin is yung judge na lang. Based on the, well, again, I'm not either, but syempre you can really see naman kung meron talagang <laughs> differentiation yung isang tao, di ba? But having said that, um, Dr. Bautista, my question now is, um, is it not correct to say that um, in the world of psychology, you do have descriptions of every type, pretty much every type of psychological deviant behavior, correct? Yes, correct. You do naman. Yes, Such yes. Such that if the concern of the women's group is that hindi madi, baka lang, you know, meron palang problem na, ay sorry, walang ganyan, hindi namin nalista, hindi tuloy siya makakuha ng annulment. There must be a way that we can write out these things without it being too, um, too the opposite of expansive, too prohibitive, di ba? Yung, yung medyo expansive naman ng content. Yun, basically, in law naman, we have, we have phrases that we can use to ensure that it includes similar, analogous um, situations, deviant behavior. Yes. Um... Uh, by the way, I wrote a position paper and okay. I submitted it to your assistants, uh, so I don't need to go through yeah, the whole just thing. Yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, the introductory section of the law actually allows for cases that may not be included in the listing. Mm. So my comment is, it is good to keep the open-ended quality in the definition, which states psychological incapacity shall include but not be yes, limited exactly. to. Uh, because really, uh, life is very complex. Human yes. nature is complex. You really couldn't have an exhaustive. You cannot box it. Yes. But 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 definitely, you can ensure that the law we create will cover all kinds of cases, all kinds of behavior that reflect psychological incapacity. In other words, that's right. Um, by the way, before I say this, I'm not in favor of annulment. Really, okay. I'd rather go for divorce. Mm. But because. Yes. Because um, and, it's and, there. And just for the record also, um, this hearing does not also um, does not also indicate that the committee will is for or against divorce because as you know it's a very contentious issue. So we're discussing psychological incapacity as it is, and any and all of you are free to voice your thoughts on divorce too. If especially if you feel that it overlaps, it's the same thing or it's two different things, by all means just go ahead. Uh, that's why as psychologists, even though we don't believe, uh, many of us don't believe in divorce, we feel that we need to participate in helping define uh, parameters of psychological incapacity because it's being used in a very careless way nowadays. Okay. Having said that, if you were to simply, because one way of tackling this is to limit the discussion to psychological incapacity. The other other way of tackling it, the other spectrum, is to start discussing divorce. And in between is the reality that there's a lot of overlap somewhere there. No? So my question is, if 
we were simply trying to avoid the word divorce so that we will forever enjoy that single position of being the only country in the world without divorce. Um, how would you... So, so one view, as I said, is to just strengthen the definitions of psychological incapacity so that it is just used more consistently. And the other would be if you were to add a ground, such as say something like um, the psychological incapacity of a person is a ground for annulment. The grounds for annulment are, one, psychological incapacity, which is defined but not limited to the manifestation of the following um, behavior, not to three. That's a one palang, psychological incapacity. If you were to define another such that such as, like, because you were saying, Doctora, that parang pinipilit kasing ipasok as a psychologically incapacity, as psychological incapacity as what? Deviant behavior. When in fact, it may not be, but simply because our law only recognizes psychological incapacity, we are forced to define that a psychological incapacity that's what you're saying yeah in in fact i think we're we're trapped because uh lawyers uh, would say you don't need to bring in a psychiatric conditions and personality disorders in order to argue for psychological incapacity but when you say that for psychological incapacity to exist the condition must be grave serious uh, incurable, then you're already How into you the not? psychiatric uh, sphere. So we uh, we have really put us in a damn if you don't damn if you don't situation. So uh, that's uh, that's the kind of situation that psychologists and couples are in. Somebody has to be uh, the person to blame. Yes. What is the effect on that? Um, in many cases, these couples have children, correct? What is the effect on, and I, I'm deviating a bit because I'm now looking into what is the effect of limiting the grounds for annulment to psychological incapacity, you know, since we're defining it anyway. And having said that, we won't finish our discussion today. I never thought we would finish it in 15 minutes, which is really, you know, pretty much the only time we have left. But um, what is the effect on the couple and the family and the children if, in fact, Talagang they're going to submit themselves to court already, no? For a case of annulment. And they now have to go to you and ask you to declare one of them psychologically incapacitated. Does that make life easier, harder for them, for their children? What, what is the effect of that limitation? One, some couples just don't simply care. Uh, for as long okay. as we're freed from this marriage, okay, that's okay. okay so but of course, if they go to a psychologist who go according to scientific standards of what it means for a person to be psychologically incapacitated, then they're not going to pass. So immediately I tell them, you're going to go through a process, and if the process shows that you have psychological incapacity, that's it. But if it doesn't show, I'm sorry, because I could not create data. So what happens? Knowing some people, okay, knowing that some of their psychologists are like that, they would paint themselves red. Somebody would have to paint themselves red. That's one, okay? Secondly, there are couples who believe uh, that what is put on public record should really represent reality, okay? So um, the psychological report is going to go public. And kids, when they're adults already, may like to read what really happened in our family. Why did my parents separate? And then they would see, my father is antisocial, and my mother is narcissistic with some other features, borderline and whatever. Um, now, the spouse who may have been painted red unjustly would now say, I'm going to contest that portrayal of myself. So the process becomes litigious. And then the kids are now pulled in into a very bloody, destructive controversy. So that's one thing that happens. What, do you know of couples who would then prefer to just not go through the process to avoid that and then end up leaving their... They end up separated, in fact. 
Yeah, and then they have their own lives to live. Somebody goes abroad, so that's gets a reality divorce. Right? That happens. Yes, Judge. Um, records of uh, cases on family matters mm -hmm. are confidential in nature. So maybe we can add some uh, safeguard features on the confidentiality of the record. So ma-avoid natin yung situation na mabasa ng mga bata. That's interesting. Dapat hindi. It's interesting. You, want, you, you, can, you can go ahead. And <laughs> no, I was just wondering, Madam Chair, if Kasi di ba we just passed FOI here, Ms. Anne? So I don't know kung covered yan ng FOI. The records. The records and yung proceedings. I would, I would argue that hindi. Because if it goes into a personal relationship, dapat naman hindi. Yeah. Because di ba FOI parang more on national security yung restrictions niya eh. I think you still, but you still have to show the relevance yata. So even though the general, the general purpose for getting information is, um, you know, public um, national security. Uh, the 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 exemptions are security. But if it's not relevant, also, pwede naman siguro. Um, another question, but there's another remedy, de ba? Legal separation. Um, marami rin ubang nag-avail of that remedy. Kung, kung if you have properties, then you can avail of legal separation. Kasi kung wala ka namang property, hindi sila mag-resort into that. Kasi anong hahatiin mo? Anong concern mo? Wala nang tayong paghahatiin eh. Di ba? Magastos pa yun. Tsaka may, may mga kanyang grounds, may kanyang-kanyang uh, causes for each uh, legal separation. Ito yung bagong amendment natin is the same uh, grounds um, with legal separation, only that the grounds under psychological incapacity to amendment um, happened during, uh, before, at the time of the marriage, and even after. So legal separation after the marriage na lang po. So, yung legal separation very rare sa, sa amin, uh, sa Bulacan. Kasi kung wala kang property, huwag ka nang mag-separate, oo. Magre-resort na lang sila into psychological incapacity para severed na talaga. Wala na talagang uh, relationship sila. Kasi sa legal separation, you're still married. Separated ka lang from bed and board. Kasama ko ba lang liability doon sa legal separation? Yes, kasama. Okay, um... I will cut short our discussion only because we really will not finish this for today and I've already kept you for three hours. Um, I appreciate everyone's input today and um, I would like you to just, um, if you could just actually tell my staff or submit to us later on if you have other discriminatory. We have a list no, of um, bills that we still need to bills and, and provisions of the Family Code and the RPC, uh, including legal separation and rape um, that we want to go over. But if there are any other laws that, that are discriminatory that we should prioritize, please feel free to let us know. And then we will invite you to the next hearing. I hope um, you won't run out of uh, time and patience because these are very important hearings. And rest assured that, that this will reach the floor um, you know, after we go through the process. Thank you so much. Thank you. So suspended till the next hearing.